Nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. We declare. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. talking about just exalting him and adoring him and declaring that his name is holy like declaring proclaiming it based off of what we know what we've experienced i want you to tell two people something that you are just grateful for that god has done this week a reason why you praise him just tell two people real quick walk around just tell two people God is doing, it creates an excitement and it, it encourages other people. So it's like you, you're you excited. Okay, God did this for you. That is awesome. God is awesome. I can join you in praising God for that thing. So it just kind of changes the atmosphere. And I see that, you know, some of you guys are still talking because God has done a lot. You can't just contain it in a few sentences. And that is awesome. Hallelujah. We serve an amazing God and we are so grateful for all that Jesus has done in our lives. Amen.
Somebody testify. Come on, sing it. There is power in the name of Jesus. I already know you know this. Come on. Power in your name. Now raise your voice real strong. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Power in your name. Whoa, oh, there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power. Come on, somebody power raise it up with that. Things change when I call.
It says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. Uh My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart triumphs and with my song, I shall thank him. My heart trusts in him. And I am helped, and therefore my heart triumphs. And with my song, I shall thank him. That's what I'm talking about. Like, when you know who Jesus is, when you trust in him, there's nothing else to do but to thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just take a moment and just give him some praise, just right where you are. Father, we exalt you. Father, we exalt you. We lift up your name, Jesus. Oh, don't you get shy on 
me lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs To get up there and praise the Lord Come on, my soul Oh, come on, my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs
to exalt his name. I want you to speak audibly to exalt his name this morning. Hallelujah, Father God. We exalt you this morning. 
We exalt you this morning for you are great, Father God. God, you are amazing. You are amazing, Heavenly Father. give honor to your name for you are worthy. You are a deliverer, Father God. You are a transformer of lives, Father God. You are a healer, Lord God. You are a redeemer, Father God. You are a redeemer, Heavenly Father. You are a miracle worker. You are a provider. You are a sustainer. You are a protector. Give us guidance, Father God. We thank you this morning. As we were uh, singing Worthy of It All, and you can stay on this song, but um, there was a verse that said, um, all my words fall short. I got nothing new. How could I express all of my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end, and you never do. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times, especially when they play my song during praise and worship, I'm like, oh, I'm in it, and I'm worshiping. Uh, as much as that song takes me to that place. But as we were singing this, I exalt you. And I said, man, when this song ends, what does I exalt you look like? in my life what does I exalt you truly mean how does that show up not just when I'm on this stage but in this house but when I walk out of these doors how am I exalting you not just in a song but how do people see that I have exalted you every day and so this morning in corporate prayer, I want us to just spend some time connecting with God because I believe he wants us to get beyond the song, really into that place of exalting him. We have been challenged the past few weeks with the messages about how we're showing up in our discipleship, how we're being distinct. And I think where we place God is the start of that journey for us because that is where our priorities begin to shift. And so whatever I exalt is where I have to start aligning my priorities. And sometimes that changes daily for us, right, with, with what's going on in our lives. But how do I get to that place where that shift is aligned where God is that constant and everything else just kind of falls in line with that. And that's what I'm dealing with in my life today. How do I get it where I just keep you the constant and all these other things that do matter fall in line with you being the constant in that exalted place? And I believe that is what he wants for us today. And I believe that is what he's speaking in this moment. And so as we go into corporate prayer, I want to open up the altar. I want you guys to sing, I will exalt you again. But I want us to not just get into the song. I want you to just really start to pray, God, what does that mean for me today, right now, where I am, what you're asking of me? And I'll open up the altar and then I will commence together. Hallelujah. I will exalt you. You are my God. I will exalt you. Yes, Lord. I will exalt you.
you to forgive us for the areas where we have not exalted you father god where we have built idols and ideas that are bigger than you father in our lives we ask you to forgive us we ask you to help us to tear those down heavenly father help us to tear those down father and put you in your rightful place lord god that we would exude your spirit and your presence that people would be drawn to you through their interactions with us, Father. Lord God, that our lives would be a reflection of the greatness of who you are, Father God. May our lives be a reflection, Lord God, in our daily work, in our daily interactions, Lord. In our thoughts, Father God, in the way that we love and care for others, Father God. May it be a representation of us placing you in that right place, Heavenly Father. In a world that is hurting, Father God, we need you in your place so that people will be drawn to you, Father. We just ask you this morning to help us, Father God. Help us to tear down those things that aren't alive with you and place us in proper alignment with you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I will exalt you. Yes, Lord. I will exalt you. You are my God. One more time. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand clap, church. Praise God. Thank you, praise and worship team, uh, band this morning. Uh, I want to welcome you all to the Sign of the Dove Church. Do we have any first-time visitors? First time here? Just raise your hand up. I'm not going to call you. And, oh, we got somebody. She's like, girl, you're going to raise your hand today. <laughs> Hey, we don't want to embarrass you, but we do want to say that um, we are grateful that you came to worship with us this morning, understanding that you could have been anywhere else this morning. And so you took your time off to be with us. Church, what do we say to our first time visitors? We love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, and that is not cliche for us. We hope you feel that love here in the building this morning. Amen. 
Amen. How many of y'all excited about what God is doing? Yeah? We got a few people. I, I, I do. I, uh, God is, he's doing some things, and I, I know he's doing it in my heart. I know he's doing it in your pastor's heart and, and in the leadership team's heart. And I can tell you week to week, I'm seeing things happening in the body to where I see he's doing things in your hearts. And so um, I think God has us on a journey that is, is, is an awesome journey. And I think we are, we're going places this year that we have been wanting to go for a while. So I'm, I'm just excited, excited, excited. Um, amen. We're going to shift into another uh, time of worship, which is our time of giving. We're going to take offering this morning. Amen. And so we are going to have the, the baskets brought up. I'm going to pray, and then you all will be able to come up, drop in your um, offering. Uh, we also have where you can give online at the Sign of the Dove uh, website, and then um, Cash App, too, which is T-S-O-D-W-K, T-S-O-D-W-K. Um, so you can give electronically, you can give in person, um, amen. Amen. And then uh, as we take offering, the children are dismissed. I believe the teens are still up here. So 12 and under or 11, 11 and under, 11 and under are dismissed. Uh, Please walk out orderly. Yes, the 12 year olds need adult Jesus today, not baby Jesus. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Praise God. So I'm going to uh, let's stand up. I'll pray and then we'll take offering. Amen. Father God, we thank you and praise you for uh, your your people today. We thank you for the gifts that they will bring this morning, Lord God. We ask that you would multiply those gifts for the needs and the work that you have for us, Father. We pray, Lord God, for those in this place that don't have to give, that have a heart to give, Lord God, that you would bless them and put them in a position to be able to give, Father God, Lord God. And those, Lord God, that that have to give and wish they could give more and, and have hearts of giving, continue to bless them, Lord God. But furthermore, we just ask that you would multiply these seeds so that your work could be done and your kingdom could be built, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. everybody. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited about what we get to do today as we continue on in the series um, of diligent disciples. Um, I've had many people praying for me. My son, I made him pray for me and lay hands this morning. So you know there's going to be an anointing today. So praise God. (laughs) Amen. Praise the Lord. So I hope that you have been blessed by this series. We have been praying and we have been seeking God over this word about becoming diligent disciples and what does that look like here at the sign of the dove. And so we, we have just been bathing it in prayer because we know that God is challenging us to do something different this year. Ask, t- just tell somebody something different, something different. Amen. There has to be something different going on this year because there's an urgency for people to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we have truly been praying and and seeking the Lord and and tearing up those things that kind of get in the way, such as laziness. Praise the Lord. Such as lethargy, all these different things that go on in our lives. Sometimes the switch of priority that some things become more important than the things of God. 
Okay? And these are just the realities of things that happen in our lives. There are the shifts that happen, and, and all of a sudden, God is no longer the priority. We love God, but he's not the priority. We don't want to be honest today. Yeah, because we are honest people, so let's, th- let's talk for real. Sometimes he's not the priority. We love him, but sometimes he's not the priority. And when that is the case, the work of the Lord does not get done. Praise the Lord. The work stalls. Okay? And people's lives that God has brought to us, we are not able to do the work in their life because we have other priorities. But if you remember what I preached back in December, I told you that there's a cost with being a disciple. And he said, you have to be willing to give up everything. If you're going to follow after me. And so we're in this place of really just wrestling with these things that we would shift our priorities and and be the real disciples that God has called us to be. Those disciples that will be diligent. I don't just want to be a follower in the crowd. I want to be able to be that person that Jesus looks at at the end of my days and he says, well done. You know the scripture. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. He's not going to say that if you haven't been faithful. You know, you know we love encouragement. You know, on the job, you, 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 you do something well, you're looking for your boss to come to you and say, hey, that was all right. You want that encouragement. And the Lord is just saying, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well, have we been faithful to the work? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to just go ahead and start with Isaiah 61. So if you just turn there, Isaiah 61. This is the prophet Isaiah that is given this word. And this word is very powerful in where we're trying to go for today. Praise God. And I want us to just be able to see what the Lord is saying. And this is verse 1 through 3. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord anointed me to bring good news to the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to captives and to freedom and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the cloak of praise instead of a disheartening spirit. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for your word today. I thank you, Lord God, that the word is uh, planted on good soil in this place, Lord. Father, we want to bear fruit Lord God, so speak forth, Lord God, pour out your spirit, Lord God, that we would grow in this word and walk forward in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. The title of today's message is Diligent Disciples Laboring. Laboring. We've been trying to really deal with these different aspects of what it is to be a diligent disciple. And a diligent disciple is one that is constantly laboring. They don't take a break. Discipleship is not seasonal. We're in a season of discipleship. You know, it's like, like it's wintertime, so we're in a season. This is the season. Or, you know, some churches, especially for us in the Northwest, you know, it's hard for us to do evangelism because we're always in this snow season and so we'll wait until the three months of summer to do evangelism because that's when it's good weather so the season for being able to be a disciple is in the summer help us jesus so that means we lay dormant for like six months my god you can make a baby in that time praise the lord that just came to me not that i want one Diligent disciples laboring. To labor is to work. To work is to have an assignment. To have an assignment is to be tasked. To be tasked means there is a request. Disciples are students who are learning and obeying. Put those words down. 
Disciples are students who are learning and obeying. Okay, it's interesting that when we're raising our kids, that we can be trying, we can try and teach them something all the time. But unless they obey it, it doesn't really work. Okay, and so therefore you have to put some discipline under them. Help us, Jesus, to make sure that something is being learned. Okay, it's we have to learn and obey to be a good disciple. That means we're learning and we're obeying. So even the stuff that we put out here on Sunday morning, the stuff that you do in your devotional time and your study time, the expectation of the teacher is that you would obey it. Praise the Lord. It's not so that we can come in church and get a big fat head full of knowledge. But that's what we got. We got fat heads in the sanctuary. People full of knowledge but haven't obeyed a thing. Praise the Lord. That's not y'all. Amen. But we cannot be people that are just getting full, constantly getting full and don't obey. The Lord is calling for disciples that will be laboring. These disciples have surrendered their way. They've surrendered their lifestyles to the task of the master. You know, sometimes here in the West, it, it, we don't want to be told what to do. And I'm talking about Western culture. You know, we want to be independent. You ain't telling me what to do. You know, Apostle here, he experienced that many times where it's just like, he ain't telling me what to do. I've heard people say it. He ain't telling me what to do. I'm, I'm going to run my own life. That's how we get. You know, the man of God going to give you a word of wisdom just like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. Well, you're not being a good disciple. A good disciple is one that's going to hear the words of the Lord and obey. There's a master. A master has spoken and the servant carries it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving up their way, giving up their lifestyle. Understand that those disciples that said yes to the call, when he picked them up, they dropped everything. They dropped their livelihood. They changed their lifestyle. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe we just need to pray a little different on Monday through Friday that help us to encounter Jesus again. Help us to encounter him again so that things will change. Because there's some things that just have not changed yet. Okay, we, we've said yes to Jesus, but we haven't fully given him everything. So it hinders us being able to do the work because we're still holding on to some things. Praise the Lord. It's like when, you, when you're trying to open the door, you got your coffee in one hand, you got your keys in the other, and you're just trying to do something to open it, but you got too much things in your hand, you can't open it. I believe that some of us are carrying way too much, and we got to let some things go. If we're going to do the work, if we're going to be laboring disciples, we got to let some stuff go. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got to let some stuff go. Now, the fact that you said that, now you're going to be held accountable. You spoke it into existence, you're going to be, <laughs> you're going to be held accountable. Got to let some stuff go. If we're going to walk in the fullness of being diligent disciples, we're going to have to let some stuff go. Praise the name of the living God. Whatever the master requires of the student, they are, need to be free to carry it out. They carry out each task with zeal and pride because, check this out, because of their love for the master. I'm not talking about trying to be religious. I'm not talking about you being a robot and being made to do things. No, there's a, there's a key element to this carrying out the task. I'm in love with the master. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm in love with the master. See, the, the part of the problem is, is that the love has waxed cold. And when the love is waxed cold, sometimes, you know, when your mate tells you to do, ask you to do something, you're just like, whatever. You know, sometimes mates go into these seasons where it's just like, oh, my love is a little bit waxed. And you want me to do what? Sometimes that happens. And then you have to be intentional to get the fire back. Somebody say intentional. 
See, that's what we need to do in our relationship with God. We have to be very intentional to get back to the fire. Because the enemy wants to do everything possible to stop you get, uh, staying in love. Let me see how I can block this love relationship between him and God. Because if I block the relationship, if I put some things in place to hinder the love, they won't carry out the work. This is not about being told what to do as much as it is. Because of my love for the master, I can't help but serve you. Come on now. Anybody been in love? When you're in love, you want to do things. You know, I'm going to say this, and I pray that some people won't get upset um, that I say this, but sometimes when, uh, when I'm in, in these uh, phone uh, mentoring relationships with people across the ocean, praise the Lord, sometimes these relationships are hard because it, what I think is that there's a purity in the relationship, and all of a sudden it ends up asking me for money. And that bothers me because I came into the relationship thinking that this was mutual and then all of a sudden it turns into money. That bugs me. But yet there's another relationship that I have with a young man who's in the Cameroon. He never asked me for money and our love has developed so much that I don't mind giving him money. In fact, I surprise him with money. Because this relationship was built on love. It wasn't built on uh, uh, you needing something from me. The love for the master should compel you to want to do. Master, what, what do you got for me today? When you wake up, this, when you wake up in the morning, it's like, Jesus, what, what, do you, what are we doing today? Because I know that this is your world. This is your, it's your, it's your arena what are we doing today, Jesus? And that needs to be the prayer of every vessel that calls on the name of the Lord. What are we doing today, Jesus? As we're turning up the intensity of being a disciple, we must honor the authority over us. We have a master and his name is Jesus. All authority has been given unto that name. I, I get so excited when we're lifting up the name of Jesus because that's my authority. If you find something else to be your authority, whenever that name is lifted, your ears perk up. So if you lifting up a, an athlete that you think is just the best, and they say the athlete is coming into town, you just like, hey, when is he coming? Your face change, your attitude change, everything changes. You get all up in zeal because the person that you find to be so interesting is coming. But see, we have a savior who loves us. We have a Savior who gave everything up for us. And so we intentionally gather into the house of the Lord to lift up the one who has done mighty things for us. So I, I will be excited to lift him up. I will be excited because he is the one I love. You know, sometimes you want to slap that friend that just got that new boyfriend or that new girlfriend because they just all, they can't stop talking about it. Like, will you shut up? Ugh. You're constantly talking about this person. Where are the disciples at of Jesus? Because the world wants you to shut up. The world is doing the same thing. Will you shut up talking about Jesus? But that world's not going to bother you if you ain't talking about nothing. If you're not doing the work, they have no reason to be like, will you stop? Are we in love? Are we in love with the master? The master carried out the work in, uh, that was prophesied in Isaiah 61, saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me. What is the work? Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news. Hallelujah. This commission was Jesus' mission on earth. He proclaimed the news of the kingdom and demonstrated it. You can put those two words. Proclaimed it and demonstrated it. Because this is the exact same thing that needs to be happening in our lives. There's a proclaiming and there's a demonstrating. 
The work of the disciple is to proclaim and demonstrate. Somewhere we are not doing either one. Okay? We're not proclaiming and we're not demonstrating. Okay? This word came in Luke 4, verse 16 through 21. And Jesus, I love this passage because Jesus is so boss. I love this passage. So Luke 4, verse 16 through 21, you all are very familiar with it. And Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. And he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to captives and recover uh, recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the people in the synagogue were intently directed at him. Now he began to say to them, today This scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What a boss. Man, I can just imagine the scene. Just, I I really can. It's like everybody looking around, oh, who is you? Talking about this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing today. They were all upset, you know, because it's just like, well, you're not doing any of these miracles up in this town. You know, you you haven't shown anything. It's just like, y'all won't believe me anyway. But Jesus says that this work that is in Isaiah, I'm here to do it. This work that Isaiah prophesied, I'm here to carry it out. And he goes on on this journey of doing the work of proclaiming and demonstrating. Powerful. Through the life of Christ, we have a very clear picture of what laboring looks like. Jesus was teaching his disciples that the message of God's kingdom in the earth is the main thing. I, I, I've been in the book of Luke all month, okay? And, and I, what I've been learning is that there was a message that Jesus kept on preaching that I was just like, I really didn't get hip to it till now. He was preaching the kingdom of God. He was preaching, repent, the kingdom of God is here. Well, and I'm just like, okay, there's something I'm missing. What am I missing in the proclaiming. What am I missing? I'm missing the fact that the king of God, the kingdom, is to come here on earth. Why do we pray the prayer? Uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Wow. So stuff that's going on in the kingdom, the stuff that God is wanting to do, the freedom for his people that he has in heaven, he says, I want that here on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. So there's things going on in the kingdom that are supposed to be happening down here on earth, and he wants to use me to do it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This is the main thing. And Jesus said, that's what I came here to do. That's what I came here to fulfill. Look at Jesus' response when, 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 he, uh, when he was asking about John. Because John was put in prison. Is this the one? Yep, Matthew. Is this the Matthew passage? Yep, Matthew 11, verse 1 through 6. Yep, there we go. Here you go. When Jesus had finished giving instructions to his 12 disciples, he went from there to preach, to teach and preach in their cities. Now, while in prison, this is John, John heard about the works of Christ, and he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the coming one, or are we looking for somebody else? Now, I I thought this was real interesting because John baptized Jesus. He was there to witness the fact that the dove came upon him and heard that, hey, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. But because John is in prison, he's just like, wait a minute. I'm in prison. Are you sure you're the one? Because I'm in prison. Because I thought you was coming to set us free, but I'm in prison. So are you the one? Are you the coming Messiah? Are you the one that was supposed to be coming? Look at his response. Verse 4, Jesus answered and said to them, (laughs) go and report to John what you hear and see. Check it out, verse 5. 
Those who are blind receive sight. And those who limp walk. Those with leprosy are cleansed. And those who are deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is any person who does not take offense at me. He basically saying, look, the kingdom is happening. And the fact that you're in jail, it means that the kingdom is happening. The fact that you have been testifying about the kingdom, you have been put in jail because the world doesn't want to hear it. You've been talking about it, John, all the time. You've been baptizing people in it. Repent for the kingdom of God has happened. And now you're in jail? Yes, John. Look at the works that have been happening. The blind see. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. This, the kingdom is here, yo. Don't get it twisted, John. You are right. Unfortunate, you will be beheaded, but you're okay. You're going to be with the Father. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So, God's kingdom is freedom from the rule and reign of sin. His kingdom is life. It is where he is the authority. That was the difference that was uh, that God was preaching about. I'm coming here to give you a brand new kingdom. It's not ruled by anybody else. This is a kingdom where I am in charge. And as long as I am in charge, there is freedom and there is life. Hallelujah. So I need you to go do the work and preach the kingdom. People need to be set free. There are people that are in bondage. There are people who are blind. There are people who are deaf. Will somebody go and do the work? Reach the kingdom of God. You might be saying, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no preacher. I don't, no, no, ain't nobody asking you to come and preach. We got enough preachers in this house. But you can be the letter that's read in your neighborhood. You can be the letter that's read in your school. You can be the letter that's read in your job. That there is a different king. That there is a kingdom of freedom. And I'm bringing it into your space. That's the laboring of the kingdom. Diligent disciples, they are laboring. His kingdom is made up of subjects who are bound in loving allegiance to his will. Woo. Loving allegiance to his will. And notice I, I chose the word carefully. They are bound. There's a binding. The word of God says in, in John chapter 15, uh, abide in the word. Abide in my word and I in you and you shall bear much fruit. There's a binding. And when I abide in the word, I'm able to carry out exactly what he needs to be done. Some of us constantly say, well, I don't know what God needs me to do. Get in the word of God and I guarantee you, you will recognize where God is working. Bind yourselves to what he's saying. Bind yourselves to who he is. Bind yourself to know his character. And I'm going to tell you, as soon as that person comes, you're just like, ah. This is where you want me to work, God. I see it. Because why? I'm bound to his word. I'm bound to his will. I'm going to tell you, I'm in the word of God, not because I need to preach. Actually, because I needed to preach, it was an interruption to my being in the word. I'm binding myself to his word. I'm, in the, I'm on this devotional. What's the name of the devotional, Anissa? It's like uh, disciples what? Strong disciples, that's the name of it. Strong disciples. We're doing this devotional every single morning. Strong disciples on, on, on Bible app. Okay, you can join us or whatever, or you can do it yourself, but strong disciples. And it's making me read the book of Luke right now. And the book of Luke is on fire in my heart. I'm bound to this word and I'm learning. Jesus, what are you trying to teach us to make us to be strong disciples? And every time I get in that word, I see that he is healing and proclaiming. That is, that, that is the key. I'm, I'm healing and I'm proclaiming. I'm healing and I'm proclaiming. I'm demonstrating and I'm speaking. So 
subjects, his disciples. They are bound in loving allegiance to his will. Whatever the king says, they carry it out. The subjects of the kingdom live by a decree of love for what God loves. Look at what John uh, 5, verse 19 through 21 says. Then Jesus replied, truly, truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself unless he sees the father doing it. For whatever the father does, the son also does. The father loves the son and shows him all he does. And to your amazement, amazement, he will show him even greater works than these. Jesus himself, he watched what the father was doing and whatever the father was doing, that's what he did. I did, see, this is why we know that there's a little lull in the work. We're not, we're not bound to what his will is. So there's a lull in the work. There's a lull in new disciples coming in. There's a lull in new people coming in. There's a lull in, in people experiencing the kingdom of God where you are. There's a lull. Okay, because there's not a binding to what he says. Because if there's a binding to what he says, whatever the Father does, that's what I'm going to do. Because that's what Jesus just said. Whatever the Father does, that's what the Son does. And so that goes back to us. Whatever Jesus is doing, that's what we do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have to be people working in the kingdom. Hallelujah. When Jesus came to earth, he proclaimed the kingdom of God is at hand, and he was correct. He was Emmanuel in their midst. He was God with us in their midst, doing the work that Emmanuel would do. John 5, 17, my father is working until now, and I myself am working. So even today, my father, the Lord God up in heaven, he is working today. He is still delivering. He is still setting free. He is still breaking binds. He's still releasing captives. And I am working too. That's what we need to be testifying. We as disciples that we're doing the same thing. And I know right now it's just like, uh, I don't necessarily know that I'm doing that. But it's okay. John 9 verse 4. We must carry out the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. There's a diligence. There's an urgency to do this work. Because night is coming when nobody can work. There's a time period that's coming when the heavens are going to be shut up. And so it's urgent for us to get busy. It's urgent for us to really challenge some of the friendships that we have right now to challenge those friendships because it's like if they're not do if they're not receiving the seed and we have been praying for them I really need to question because somebody is being influenced either you're influencing them or they're influencing you we need to pray about some of these relationships we need to pray about some of these things that are going on I love what Pastor, Apostle used to say. If they're not bringing you towards Christ, then they're bringing you away from him. That was that advice when I was single and, and, and talking and dealing with other people. It's like if that, if that relationship is not pulling you closer to Christ, then you need to let it go. Mm. Jesus commissioned the twelve with power to do the same work. He commissioned the 12. He said, I'm giving you power, okay? And I want you to go out into the villages. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to proclaim, and I want you to heal the sick. That's what he did with the 12. And then later on in the scriptures, he takes 72 more. And he commissions the same thing. I'm giving you power. I want you to go out to heal the sick and proclaim. So there's a laboring that we need to be doing, okay, which God has already given us power. He's given us the Holy Ghost to be able to have power that we are able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Well, you say, uh, well, healing's just not my ministry. Have you laid hands on your child when your child was sick? Don't tell me about the, the ministry of laying on hands. When your child has been sick, you start going in. When somebody close to you has been going through, you start going in. So don't tell me I'm not a healer. Uh-uh, don't tell me that. 
the laboring of the disciples is to heal and proclaim. We just got to be obedient. Obedient to the work. Sometimes healing is going to come through that word that you give them. Sometimes deliverance is going to come through you, you just smiling at them. I, I can't tell you strongholds that have been broken just from a smile. The dude that I met in the airport. Look, I, I, I didn't even know dude. I didn't know him from Jack. Okay? But something about me, uh, he must have thought I was a fool. I must have had that look. But it was the look of God's anointing. Because he was searching for something. I didn't know what he wanted. But he thought the presence of God was with me. And maybe this man can help me. That young man, this is back in 2015, stepped to me in the airport because he had been denied entry into the United States. Young man, 18 years old, lost. They denied him, didn't know what he was going to do. Here come these Americans that just came from Uganda, and he's sitting over in the corner just crying. I just happened to notice him. I didn't say anything or anything like that. But something about the look of me caused him to bring himself over to me and say, sir, can I borrow your phone? I was nervous. I don't know you, and you want to use my phone. But it was so serious, and I saw his brokenness, and I saw his fear. He just needed to use the phone to call his sister to let her know who was in the U.S., I'm not coming. They denied me entry. I don't know what to do. Crying his tears out. I'm just sitting there just broken. And also thinking about the fact, God, you would use me in this situation. All these other people in the airport, everybody else is around, and you use me? It brought deliverance to his life just by an act of obedience. We've been church too long to think only healing is going to come from Shata -ta -ta! We need a little bit of Shata -ta, though. Hallelujah. We need a little bit of it. Come here, Sammy. Let me put some Shata -ta on you. <laughs> Listen. He's called us to heal and proclaim. How different would things be in your sphere of influence if we were obedient to what he called? That we wouldn't operate in fear when somebody said, man, I got a little bit of a headache. Hey, let me pray for you because I'm from the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom, there's freedom. So I believe that this headache of yours will be healed. And it's not about the results. Watch what happens just because you were obedient. So whether they got healed or not, that's not your concern. The rhythm that we're not into is we're not into the rhythm of obedience. Whatever the master says, that's what we do. So when we see things, when we hear things, let us be obedient. Lay hands on the sick. Pray for those. Give the word. Don't just let them pass by. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. And even today, he's professed, those that who profess that Christ is their Lord are to be doing the work. John 14, 12. Check that out. Truly, truly, I say to you, there we go. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me the, and the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I am going to the Father. Now, it's interesting to me that we, we read about Jesus, we read about all the works that he's done, and those things are amazing. I mean, can you attest to it? Those things are amazing. But yet he says, and it's in red in my Bible, 
greater works will you do? Greater works will you do? I got to get to work then. He's saying that I'm going to be doing greater things. I got to get to work. Everything, the, the thing is, the positions that you have, regardless of job or whatever, the situations that you're in, because you said yes to Jesus, they have purpose more than ever before. God allowed those things to be open to you so that you can now bring the kingdom of God into those spaces. We got to change our mindset. Okay? I wasn't just going after a job. I wasn't just going after these things. I said yes to Jesus. He opened the door. I stepped through. Now he says, bring my kingdom into that space. Bring the principles of the kingdom into that space. Show people that you operate with a different authority. Come on, somebody. That's good, Pastor Corey. Come on. Hallelujah. Preach to myself. Diligent disciples are laboring for the master. So what is the work? The works looks just like Isaiah 61, and I'm almost done. The works look just like Isaiah 61, and I'm going to put them in four bullet points, and you can write down each one. The first bullet point is sharing the good news. There's good news. And the only reason why we wouldn't share it is if it's not good to us. The sharing of the good news. The good news of the kingdom is that I'm no longer bound to serve myself. I have a new king. And he's the authority in my life. And he has an authority of freedom. The kingdom that I was serving was self-serving and it was going nowhere. I was dying. Serving myself, striving after things for myself, trying to build things for myself. It was empty and fruitless. The good news is I got a new king. And it ain't me. I have a new king. That's good news. You too can have a new king and his name is Jesus. His authority is greater than anything else in the world. In fact, demons flee at his name. Did you know that? His name is, is good news. If it's good to you, share it. He said in Isaiah 61, he's anointed me to preach good news. Well, preachers get up. Preachers wake up. Let's go. Let's go. It's time. Tell the good news. Point number two. Laying hands on the sick and casting out devils. That's, that's the work. That's the work. You know people in your life that are bound with things. You know them. You see them. People at school, you see them that act crazy. Okay? We can't just laugh at them. <laughs> You're so crazy. They bound. <laughs> And they need you. They need your face. They need your smile. They need your words. They need your, your authority that God has given you. They need it. Your neighbors need it. Your co-workers, they need it. They're bound. And you operate through a different principle. You operate in kingdom authority. And in kingdom authority, there's stuff set free. I know sometimes we, we don't, we're not obedient because we're in fear. We're not obedient because it's like, man, I'm bound on myself. Wait a minute, 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 wait You might be going through stuff, but you serve a king that sets you free. The call that's on your life is still the same. If you said yes to Jesus, go and do. Those disciples that were walking with Jesus still had issues. But yet he said, I empower you to go and heal and proclaim. I'm giving you the power and authority to go and do. Do you know that Peter still lied even after that? So I, let's remove all the excuses. All the excuses, gone. Be obedient, lay hands on the sick. I, I, I'm excited to see what will happen at the sign of the dove, when we start being obedient. 
I'm excited to see from the demonstrations. Now, don't get all scared. Operate in faith. Because we're supposed to be a people of faith. So I believe that you're going to be healed. I believe that you're going to be delivered. I believe that you're going to be set free. Why? Because I serve the God who sets people free. I'm, I'm excited to see what will happen. Point number three. This is a good one. Some of y'all fighters will like this one. Point number three. The work is making things right where there is injustice. See, sometimes we miss the point that Jesus went about making things right when things were not just. Remember the woman who was caught in adultery. There was a wrong there. And he came and made it right. He's the God of justice. There's a kingdom principle that says that I am the God of righteousness. I'm going to come into a place where there is injustice and I'm going to make it right. So there's a place of justice that we're supposed to be doing. Okay? And it doesn't even have to be on a big platform. You can see things that are, are just locally done, even if it's right across the street from your house, that are unjust, that you can come and bring the righteousness of God into that situation. Even dealing with siblings or dealing with family, there's stuff that is just, that is not right. Let me bring the righteousness of God to correct the wrong. justice. There's a place of work that the disciples are supposed to do. Make the wrong things right. Even on a bigger platform, some of you are supposed to be in office. Some of you are supposed to be in governmental office to bring the principles of the kingdom into the earth. To impact where there is injustice you bring the principles of God into this injustice and make it right. Pastor Palmer is doing that right now in Kentucky. Serving in an office where he is able to uh, uh, stand in the gap for those that, that are incarcerated, young men, young black men that have been incarcerated, he is fighting for them. Taking the principles of God inserting them, taking the righteousness of God and inserting it into a place where things are wrong. That's the work. Point number four. The other point, the last point. Discipling is raising others up to know the way of the Godhead kingdom. Raising others up to know the Godhead kingdom. Those of us that call on the name of Jesus, our job is to teach. Our job is to be an example. It doesn't matter that, that you have the gift of teaching. That's not what this is. The work of the disciple is to go and make more disciples. So whoever it is, even if you don't have a gift of teaching, you are supposed to be an example that others can follow. The work. We need to raise up others. In the work, Jesus was made a promise. Jesus made a promise, excuse me, that he will be with us always. So no matter what's going on, no matter what situation you find yourself in, in doing the work, you're not doing it alone. You're never alone in it. If you will operate in faith, the Holy Spirit will be with you every step of the way. I can't tell you the number of times that I have been fearful of being able to say something. I don't care now. I, I'm getting old enough where it's just like, hey, I'm going to just say what I want to say. But listen, he will be with you. Let me just step out on faith. He will be with you. Some of you at your jobs, you're just like, well, I don't know if I should say something. No, just do it. Just, just do it. Because as long as you're, uh, as long as you're shut up, those people around you remain bound. But the people that are around you are around you for a reason. Even those cantankerous people. They are around you for a reason. 
And God has entrusted you with his kingdom principles to make wrong things right. The Holy Spirit will do it through. Let's get back to loving the master. When we are in love with him, when he has our hearts, we are willing to do whatever he asks. That means we got to come, bl- come back to the place where we first encountered Christ. We got to come back to that place. Because I think some of us have lost our first love. And, and things have been waxing cold. We got to get back to our love with Christ. I'm coming, remember the song we used to sing, I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about, it's all about you, Jesus. It's not just a song. We got to get back to the heart of worship where nothing else matters. Jesus, I'm just walking with you. I'm just trusting you. I'm so in love with you that whatever you want me to do, If we don't do this, we can only expect the same old church. If we don't do this, we can only expect to be dulled to its word. If we don't do this, we won't be ready for his return. See, the Bible talks about being ready. The Bible talks about being found faithful when he returns. The Bible talks about that when he returns, what will he find you doing? You going to find me on Netflix? When he returns, this is the, see, see? What will he find you doing? We have a men's conference next week. Talk about all this. What will he find us doing? Matthew 24, verse 44 through 51. Matthew 24, verse 44 through 51. This is the New Living Translation. This is like the passage of doom, but it's encouraging. (laughs) Here we go. You also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth. The master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks, "Ah, my master won't be back for a while. And he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk. The master will return unannounced and unexpected. And he will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want to be a faithful servant. I want to be faithful to the call of God. So things got to turn up. Here we are, the fourth week of January. Things got to turn up. Okay, life is going to happen. People are going to lose stuff. People are going to pass. Life is going to happen. But we got to turn up in our job. We got to be faithful servants. Faithful to the call. We had said before, will there be a yes? When we acknowledge his authority in our lives, will we have a constant yes in our hearts? And I'm closing. There are things that we need here at the sign of the dove. Teachers are needed. Will there be a yes, Lord? Spiritual mentors are needed. Will there be a yes, Lord? Missionaries are needed. Will there be a yes, Lord? Someone is pleading for God's justice 
because they're being oppressed. Will there be a yes, Lord? We need people to serve in the house of the Lord. Will there be a yes, Lord? We need people to tell others about Jesus. Will there be a yes, Lord? Sign of the dove, let us be a body of disciples laboring for the kingdom of God. That his kingdom and his will will be carried out through us. Just bow our heads. Some of you are here today and you don't know who Jesus is. You don't know about the one who sets people free. You might be here saying, I'm, I'm bound. I don't know about this Jesus. You might be saying, I, I've heard of him, but I haven't committed my way to him. And I want to be able to pray with you this morning. You're feeling the tug in your heart that you need to surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're feeling the tug in your heart that you need to surrender to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If that is you today, lift your hand. I need to surrender to the King of Kings. I need a new king. Because what I've been doing has not been working. I need that authority in my life. I need that authority of his love, his loving kindness that breaks strongholds that breaks chains, that sets free. I need Jesus. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to make this prayer because I know that there are people here that still have not given over their lives. But I'm going to pray right now for you. Lord God, you know the ones in this room that are hearing the words of truth. And I pray for them right now. Father, I pray that they would bow their head before you, confess that they are a sinner, confess that they need you. Lord Jesus, you have met many of us in these situations. You have met many of us in places where we were in our lowest point and you showed up. So I pray that there would be a confession in someone's mouth today that they would declare their need for you. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in the hearts. Father, I pray, Lord God, that they would say yes to you. In Jesus' name. Now for the rest of us, those of you that are committing to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, I want you to stand because I want to pray for you. I'm committing my way, even in the midst of fear, even in the midst of really not knowing what that plan might look like, but you have received the conviction of the Lord today. There's been a little bit of fire set up under you today that there's a need to get busy laboring. Some of you do need to come and talk with me and Pastor Jason. You need to schedule time with us so that we can talk about what is going on in your heart that you need to do, that you need to carry out. We know that God wants to do something, that God wants to move. So stretch out your hand before the Lord is a sign of surrender. Father, you see your people, Lord, that are saying, I surrender to you. They're surrendering to you, surrendering to your kingdom authority, that you are the reigning God in their life. They're surrendering because of the love that you have for them. They're going back to that place where you rescued them. They're going back to that place where you told them that you love them. They're going back to that place where you said, child, I forgive give you. They're going back to that place where you set them free. They're going back to that place that reminds them that you are their God. And so, Father, it is from that place that we humbly say, yes, Lord. Whatever you want, yes, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, yes, Lord. You want me to serve? Yes, Lord. If you want me to go be a missionary? Yes, Lord. If you want me to work in the house of the Lord? Yes, Lord. If you want me to teach? 
Yes, Lord. If you want me to serve, yes, Lord. You want me to speak, yes, Lord. You want me to lay hands, yes, Lord. You want me to pray, yes, Lord. So, Father, may your anointing rest on us. May you equip us with your power. May you fill us with your spirit that we would carry out your work. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And somebody said, amen and amen. Would you give God praise? Would you clap your hands before the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. There's, there's an intensity that's been turned up. You know, there's an intensity that's been turned up, and, and, and we're excited. You know, so any of you that need to meet with us, we're open. Any of you that need to meet with us, we're open. I had two people respond about uh, 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 wanting to teach children on Wednesday nights because we've got some new things happening, okay? We've got a new class that's going to be taught on Wednesday. Okay, this new class uh, that is being taught is about kingdom authority. I'm sorry, the kingdom authority class is on Wednesday. That's right, yeah. So Wednesdays at 7, Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, Minister Craig is going to be teaching about kingdom authority and what that looks like, okay? Now, in order for some of our families to be able to take part in that class, we need people to teach their children, okay? Because we don't want it to be a hindrance that I can't go to the class because I've got kids, okay? So we have a need. There's another class that's happening on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., okay? And this class is called Spiritual Discipleship. It's being, huh? it's being taught at 845, Spiritual Discipleship. All these classes are going to start at the top of February, okay? And so if you're feeling a surge that I need to be equipped more and more, we've got it going on. Okay, Wednesday nights at 7, and then uh, Sundays at 8.45. You can put your name on the sheet in the back, okay? We want to make sure that people are being equipped. Next thing, men's retreat is happening next week. And I'm telling you, I'm excited about the men's retreat because there's a surge that's happening. If, if, and I'm going to tell you something. Don't let anything be a hindrance of you showing up to the men's retreat, okay? Not even finances, all right? And even with time, I'm asking you to make it a priority to show up. There are four different services that will be happening, and then we have a, a, a fellowship that will be happening. But starting Friday night... Friday night, we're going to be having an awesome time teaching about prayer. And then Saturday morning, we're going to be teaching about repentance. And then Sunday night, we're going to be teaching about the depths of worship. Did I get it right? Saturday night, we're going to be teaching about the depths of worship. And then Sunday morning, we're going to close it up with what it means to be a man. What is the title of what you're doing? Depending on God. It's going to be a powerful time. We're, we've, we've been praying and bathing this in prayer, and I'm believing that God is going to show up mightily. Okay? There's a fire that is happening. It's going to be happening in our men. Please sign up so that you can be ready. It's going to be starting next Friday. Amen. Make sure you take care of that. We're going to be having our business meeting that are going to, is going to be happening. Those of you that are members of the Sign of the Dove Church, we're asking you to be here right after service uh, on the 5th so that we can make sure we vote and, and go through the uh, process. Um, there needs to be some no, more deacons. Some of you are supposed to be deacons in this church. Some of you are supposed to be servants of the house of the Lord, okay? And we need nominations, okay? I haven't received a single one, all right? So if you uh, uh, get somebody to nominate you, if you say, hey, talk to your neighbor and say, hey, uh, go ahead and nominate me, okay? All right? To be a deacon of the church, all right, uh, and then we're going to put them before the church so that they can be voted for it. But that's going to be happening on the 5th of February. Amen? All right, cool. Let's stand up. Praise God. I hope you are right. We're not trying to be a church that is eloquent. Hi, babe. We're not trying to be a church that's eloquent in, in how we present stuff. That's not what this is about. We want to preach in a way where if anybody comes into this place, they can find God. I, I, I want to be a person that's searching for God. When I come into your church, I want to come into a place where I can find God. I don't care how well you can speak. 
I don't care about that. I don't care about your degrees. I don't care about none of that. Can I find God? Because I'm desperate for him. That's why I don't have a problem worshiping any place. As long as I can find God, I'm okay. I don't care who you are, whatever. I don't care about your title. I don't care about your equipping. Can I find God? Because I need him. Hallelujah. Mike, we're praying for you, man. Praying for you and your family. Reach your hands before the Lord. Father, we just want to say thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for the word. Thank you for lighting a fire under us. Now, Father, as we leave this place, we ask that your presence would go before us. Father, may your face shine upon us and give us peace. We give you all the glory and the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please connect with one another before you leave. Make sure that you say hi. Uh, make sure that you just mess, message everyone. Everybody on Facebook, God bless you. Thank you so much. We love you. In the mighty name of Jesus.